G'day, welcome to Horsepower, and welcome to my latest project. Uh, if you like Celica GT4s uh, or anything to do with 3S GTE engines, I think you'll find this pretty interesting. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time now, and over the last little while I've been gathering all the bits and pieces I, I need to make it happen, and now is the now is the time to put it all together, make it happen. Um, I've always been a bit of a sucker for the 3S engine and um, I've always wanted to build the ultimate 3S which is actually not a 3S so what I've got down here two 5S FE blocks or bottom ends third one over here so if you're familiar with these engines you'll know these come out of a Camry also um, a multitude of um, base level uh, Toyotas uh, from the 90s and early 2000s. They're, uh, they're nothing special, they're a, uh, an economy uh, mass produced motor. Probably one of the most reliable engines you could ever buy to be honest. They're super durable, they're very underpowered, I think they maybe have 130 horsepower or something from 2.2 litres so they're under stressed. Um, so that's going to be the base for the new motor and we could go with the classic 3S GTE head however we can do better than that of course what we're going to do is build the ultimate S series a 5S GTE beams of course this is not a, a simple bolt together process it requires a lot of custom work and custom parts to, to make this happen this is the recipe 5S FE block out of a late model Camry I say late model 98 onwards came out of a uh, a wrecking yard for a hundred bucks so that'll go get bored and cleaned up by the machinist uh, that bit's very easy and then we come to our fancy bits max speeding forge con rods I turned up my nose at these a few years ago but after talking to a few people in the know they're actually very good uh, they're obviously made in China but so are other many or some of the, the other leading brands of of connecting rods. Um, I used those in my 4 age. they measured up beautifully and they handed all the abuse I took at it so I'm happy to use those again. Had I, had I been building a thousand horsepower drag motor probably wouldn't use them. This is it's gonna, gonna be built to a 600 horsepower motor and they should be fine. Pistons, so these are a custom piston by Trom in the USA. Uh, Brendan at PSI Racing organized these for me. So there's a few different ways you can build up a 5S GTE. Uh, you can use 3S GTE rods and then you machine your crank down to, um, to fit them. Um, and then you have to use, so if you use a custom height piston to, to make it work. Uh, so there's nothing off the shelf to fit the beams. And the difference with the beams compared to the earlier 3S generation heads is the valve angle. So you can't use uh, off-the-shelf 5S GTE pistons, you've got to get custom ones made. Uh, hence why I commissioned these. Um, so they're a very nice thing. They've got a cool wee logo on them. So those are bought out to 87.5. So it's 87.1 millimeter bore. Uh, you want to not take too much uh, material out of the wall. Um, I'd rather have more strength in the cylinder wall rather than a little extra capacity. So I've sort of taken a, a reasonable amount out um, without going overkill with the capacity. Um, the main reason I want capacity is for the extra stroke to um, basically give a whole lot of torque down low. Uh, we'll move on. A set of racing stiff valve springs, these are nothing special, uh, PK Canelli Cams ordered those for me, uh, the usual set of ARP hardware, so we are upgrading from a 10mm head stud to an 11mm head stud, there's a wee bit of extra work that goes involved with that. Um, but 10mm head studs are very um, very small for a, a 
turbo charged application, three SGTEs are known for lowering heat gaskets and uh, to my mind that's probably the main reason. Uh, and going up to 11mm, if that still isn't enough, that gives us the opportunity to upgrade to a higher grade sort of 625 um, stud. Uh, these are just off the shelf um, for an Evo, which is quite convenient. And the also the standard 3S um, main studs as well. Bearings. And then the party piece, which is the 3SGE dual VVTI beams cylinder head. Uh, this is obviously out of the Alteza, the only ca car it came out of. Uh, for my sleeker, I'm going to use an auto head, not a manual one. Uh, the manual ones are a better head, but there are some issues with them. Uh, the manual heads have bigger buckets because uh, they have bigger cams, which is good. Um, and also more valve relief um, down under the spring for bigger cams. Uh, the heads themselves are the same casting. Uh, the problem you have with a manual head um, is one, they're, they're harder to find and they're harder to find a good one. Uh, they've all usually been raped. And my, my engine is for a rally car build and you want as much torque down low as you can. With the manual head, the torque range is about 2000 higher, higher RPM than the auto head. So for the maximum response mid-range torque, you're probably better off going with the auto head. When I say the um, the head, I mean the cam. So I'm using the factory automatic uh, 3SGE cams in this. Um, and basically it's gonna be a factory head other than a light port and polish and, uh, and valve springs. Um, down the line, I may change the cams, but to start with, I think the factory cams are quite an aggressive cam and will suit what I'm trying to do with it. Um, so yeah, um, that is basically the, the recipe. Uh, the first stage is to prep the block before it goes for machining. What we're going to do today is tear down one of these junkyard engines. This was recently fished out of a junkyard for $95. So we've got to make sure that it's going to be usable and we'll strip it down. There's a bit of preparation to do before it goes off to get machined. Just pulled the sump off and the oil pickup. If you're familiar with 3S motors but haven't pulled apart a 3S, you might be wondering what's going on here. So this is a balance shaft arrangement. Uh, the problem with four cylinders, one of the problems with four cylinders is secondary imbalance and that gets um, progressively worse the bigger the motor gets. Um, all the, the weights from all the cranks and the pistons and the rods gets worse as the motor gets bigger so Toyota have chosen along with many other manufacturers that once their four cylinders get to a certain size they often install balance shafts which lowers noise, vibration, harshness sort of things and makes for a, a smoother running car. These are not 100% necessary and I will be removing them. This does present some challenges, however, um, not big ones, but um, in terms of when we bolt this motor back together, um, this is obviously designed to fit under a, um, a 5S sump. So the story is, is that I'm not just, just going to build one of these motors, I'm going to build two of them. One for my Celica GT4 and another for our JZA80 Supra. If you want to see more about uh, the build of that, head across to the Gasket Fucker um, YouTube channel. So me and my friend Scott are doing a, a build series on that. Um, so we're building two 5S GTE beams, however they will differ slightly. One will be a real drive and one is an oil drive, so it's mounted transversely. 
uh, hence there'll be different sumps on them uh, different timing gear uh, and, and also in terms of the water passages uh, there'll be many little subtle differences there we'll get into that further down the line and a lot of this I'll be learning as I go through this process um, so when it's going into the Celica GT4 um, we'll be using a 3S uh, GTE uh, like a Gen 4 style sump pan, so the two piece aluminium and steel sump which means I have no choice but to remove this uh, so I don't know how it's going to work in terms of what oil pickup we need and, and all of that I don't foresee that being a big challenge um, it's going to have to just be some a bit of fabrication worst case scenario uh, when we come to put that all together got this uh, this short block assembly all apart now now we can have a good look uh, it seems the reason this uh, car ended up in a junkyard was due to a blown head gasket so there's a bit of uh, rust on these bores here you wouldn't want to use this block uh, without um, doing a rebore with oversized pistons uh, fortunately that was always the plan for this build so that shouldn't be a problem uh, we'll spin it around and we can see everything looks as it should um, there's no evidence of any run bearing or or anything else like that you can tell it's done a few k's from all the oil sort of sludged up but won't be a problem this looks like a very good block um, so this one here is a, a late model uh 98 onwards block we'll show you down here the difference between the early one and the late one so we can see here um the lack of casting around here so that's known to create a stress concentration around the bottom of the head stud so when you put oversized head studs in um talk them up more than factory then um, these blocks are known to crack around here I don't ever want that to happen it was obviously a known problem uh, from Toyota although um, the early ones are very reliable Toyota still changed it around the year 1998 to this um, later model casting here which is similar however you can see the um, the casting is much more smoothed out and much more um, sort of streamlined into the block so that the stress from this head stud is far more evenly distributed amongst the casting and so this should um, sort out all the cracking issue around this part of the block now this is the reason i got three of them so i've got started off with two blocks um, one for the Supra, one for the Sleeker and i decided that i'm going to put a lot of time and effort and money into building these engines so i may as well spend another 100 bucks and start with a, a later model 98 block which is how we ended up here uh, we'll cruise across to the crank and there's nothing special about this um, compared to the early um, or the other 3S engines there's the, the balance gear here which drives those balance shafts so this is an interference fit onto the crankshaft so we can simply knock that off with a hammer um, all of these bearings all these bearing surfaces look in excellent condition um, so I'm pretty happy with that crank that should be good to go and we'll just have a quick look at the, the factory uh, 5S um, rods and pistons nothing really wrong with them but I intend on pushing this motor pretty hard 
so this stuff is definitely not up to spec um, for any kind of high RPM, high stress uh, conditions. So they'll be going in the bin. Uh, this is not a it's not a drag racing engine or anything. It's going to be sort of reasonably highly stressed, but not point not pushed to the point in which we should be at the limit of any blocks or anything. We should be looking for around five to six hundred horsepower. Um, maybe in hill climb spec but most of the time it's going to be in the rally car with um, maybe 400 horsepower but with ex excellent response and excellent uh, low down uh, torque um, the extra stroke uh, will help with that obviously and the variable valve timing of course uh, improves the volume volumetric efficiency across the the, um, the rev range uh, so it should give a, a very talky, very responsive engine and then we might turn it up uh, for hill climb spec we'll see how we go here we have the, the 3S, GTE and the 5S block side by side and we can see there's quite a few differences so with the 3S block here we've got all the ribbing uh, basically ground back to, to nothing and over here Got a whole lot of ribbing which we'll need to clear to, to grind to clear the crankcase, sorry the transfer case. Um, there's also these um, little casting bits up here which hold a bracket to bolt to the transfer case. I'm not too stressed about those ones. Uh, however at this end we see four bolts here which mounts um, another bracket to the transfer case. And we can see we've got the casting there for them but there's no machining so we're going to have to um, do a little machining there to put some holes in there um, the top decks look pretty much the same um, obviously there's a bigger bore with the 5S compared to well, the 3S and the 5S so the 5S has a 1.1mm bigger bore another difference which is going to um, be a problem here is the clearance for the oil pump um, the 5s has these little casting bits um, in around here um, whereas the, the 3s well sorry this is the <laughs> this is the 5s it's got extra extra material up there it just means that when we put on the um the late model oil pump that it won't clear so that's the first job for now is to is to clearance that This is the, the 5S oil pump, there's nothing wrong with it, uh, but I want to use the, the alloy um, two-piece sump, which is this oil pump here, and you can see the difference here, this is a, a funny shaped one, and this is a round one, and so this is where the round bit goes, into there, but then, let me put this one in, this bit fouls on this piece of casting here just here so we're just going to get the mill here and just take out take out some of this material so the tool we're going to be using for this is a a ball and a cutter so this puts a nice radius on it uh, if we use a, a square cutter um, it leaves obviously a very sharp corner which can lead to stress concentration and cracks which obviously we don't want uh, so we just need to pick the right radius um, so I'll just sort of so that sort of looks about right so we'll put this in the mill and we'll start spinning it up and see what happens Pretty happy with that, it all seems to fit. Right, so it's time to oversize our head studs. So I've switched the block around in the mill, so it's obviously 
sitting upright. Um, so I've clamped it down with these. It's probably not super necessary, but I don't want it falling off and going everywhere. Um, the main reason I put it in the mill, it's probably not super necessary, is that because um, we're drilling out um, the holes to be slightly bigger, the drill bit has a tendency to grab and then go in on an angle and just make not such a nice um, not not such a nice hole. Uh, so this is how I'm going to do it. It's pretty simple really. Uh, we'll just wind the mill round, get it nicely lined up with each hole and send it down here which is a 9.75 drill bit. So the factory head studs uh, in the 3S are uh, M10 by 1.25 which is a fairly standard Toyota thread and what we're going to do is take it out to M11 by 1.25 so the same thread pitch just one mil bigger and though and so these are evo head studs so it's quite a simple process we just drill, drill that out which takes out most of the thread and then we run an m11 by 1.25 tap down it side and clamped it down. What I need to do now is make a 2 by oil feed. So the 5S comes with this little bung here which I've removed and so what I'm going to do is get this surface nice and flat and then uh, run a 10.8mm drill bit and then tap it to M12 by 1.25. Here I am drilling the bolt holes for the transfer case bracket. Uh, the flats were already machined on this part of the casing uh, for three out of the four bolts. Uh, so I simply marked with a scribe and center punched and drilled with the battery drill. I had to ground down one part of the, the casting on the block, um, but three out of four bolts should be adequate for holding the bracket. I would have liked to have set this up in the mill ideally but due to the awkward shape of the block and the size of the mill, this wasn't really practical. Comparing the 5S and the 3S block, the big difference is the lack of ribs here. And ribs here, that's going to fail the transfer case. So. Got, them, got the two side by side so I'm going to grind these back until this one looks roughly like this one. Got my freshly ground 5S block with the dummy casing of the Celica GT4 gearbox. We just need to check clearance before it goes off to the machine shop. Fortunately, 
just in there it's still touching on a rib uh, so it's not gonna sit nicely well it's not gonna go into its proper place um, so I'm glad I checked this we'll whip the, the gearbox back off and regrind it Yeah, it's all fitting. Took me, I don't know, six or seven goes to grind it off all the right amount to get it get it right. I didn't want to take off too much material to weaken the block. What I'm going to do now is take off this part of the casing here and then we can get a, a good look at the actual clearance. And another thing we need to be mindful of is how it goes together. And while it goes together fine now, by the time we get a a clutch and a flywheel in there and then it's all got to be perfectly lined up and then well, the way I get the get these on is they go in on the piss uh, sort of maybe 15 degrees um, offset and then once they get towards the dowels they spin around and drop down uh, so I just need to sort of do my best to kind of guess where exactly the clearance needs to be while it does that I don't well, I could put a crank in it and a clutch and a flywheel. It's actually quite a big job. I haven't got a flywheel yet for this. So we're just going to have to take an educated guess. And then if it needs a little bit of touching up, once the motor's all together, then it's not a big deal. Um, hopefully it doesn't come to that. She's pretty tight, but that'll work, I think. This concludes part one. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.